When I was a freshman in law school, Sandy Dallenberg was an upperclassman, and I was in absolute awe of him. Fifty years later, and just a few more years than 50 years later. <laughs> but 50 years later, I'm still in awe of Sandy Dallin Burton, what he has accomplished in his life. Constitutional lawyer, legislator, educator, bar leader at every level, president of this society, member of the board. He was at our board of trustees meeting again today, just like he has been for decades. One of his most notable contributions has been his fearless advocacy of the independence of the judiciary, including his strong support of merit selection and merit retention in accordance with its intended purpose and process. His commitment to pro bono is legendary and a model for all lawyers earning him the Florida Supreme Court's Tobias Simon Award a number of years ago. Let me simply present to Sandy the Society's Lifetime Achievement Award and let you recognize him and hear from him. And I'd like to read, I'd like to read if, if my eyes are going to do this. Lifetime Achievement Award presented to Talbot Sandy Dallenbert in recognition of a highly distinguished career as a lawyer his contribution to the Florida judiciary and contributions to this society as a trustee member for over 25 years and as a, is president and by unanimous vote of the Florida Supreme Court Historical Society Board of Tr Trustees. He has served as a member of the Florida House of Representatives, president and president emeritus of Florida State University, dean of the Florida State University College of Law, Chair of the Florida Constitution. This cost us a lot of money to come. <laughs> Chair of the Florida Constitutional Revision Commission. Chair of the Florida Commission on Ethics and in numerous and other important positions. His contribution to the lives and well-beings of Floridians will be his lasting legacy. His lifetime of contributions to the organized bar and our justice system have been extraordinary president of the American Bar Association, president of the American Judicature Society, chair of the American Bar Association section of legal education and admissions to the bar, and chair of many ABA committees are among them. He has worked tirelessly on issues including model dispute resolution proceedings, assistance to emerging democracies, detainee treatment, open government, pro bono service, and civil liberties. He is a mentor to many in these endeavors and a model to all. His continued devotion to the law, the Florida judiciary, the legal profession, and to public service, as well as his outstanding character and ethics are deserving of this society's highest appreciation and highest honor. Justice LaBarca, I think it took more than three minutes to read that damn pack. <laughs> we can start now. Yeah, and, and also, I'm just really quite honored that, that Hank gave me 15 minutes and only gave you three. <laughs> you know this Lifetime Achievement Award? What the hell is that? <laughs> Isn't that something you give to a geezer? Somebody's been around for a long time, had not done too damn much damage, um, and you know he's going to appreciate it a lot. But that, that's the kind of person you give Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm one of them, uh, and I love it. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, but my understanding of the Lifetime Achievement Award changed a little bit two weeks ago. But did you learn that the Golden Globe Awards Committee had given the Lifetime Achievement Award to George Clooney? <laughs> OK. 
okay now. <laughs> Handsome? Yeah. Witty? Yeah. Sexy? I mean, good God. <laughs> um, you know, clearly, I deserve this award. <laughs> And then I learned, because the, the, the host, Tina Fey, one of the hosts of that Golden Globes Committee Award, observed that uh, George Clooney actually was married to a beautiful woman who was far more intelligent and far more accomplished than he was. And by God, that fits all categories. So I, I, <laughs> And I'd like to introduce my law partner, a Patsy Palmer. <laughs> Donald Lou Askew used to say, Sandy, you are a different person since Patsy married you and let you keep your name. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter, Gabrielle, is here. Gabrielle, you can stand, I think. Is a lawyer in Miami. My son Josh is a teacher. This is a school night. He, he's not here. Uh, but I'm also very proud to have my brother Dick and his wife Jean join us. Dick. You know, I've been very lucky to, to be a lawyer during the time I've been a lawyer. Uh, it was a uh, it was a good time, uh, in part because things were possible then that don't seem to be possible for many people today. Um, I, I was able to serve in the legislature at a time when Democrats and Republicans really got along. Uh, that's where we got a lot of things done. Uh, I think I always thought that everybody was inspired by Governor Askew and by Governor Collins. And, uh, and people really believed in public service. It was, it was a wonderful time. Um, my money did not control politics in those days. Um, and it's uh, really great to think about people I had a chance to serve with. In fact, as I prepared these remarks, I thought of all the people I've had a chance to serve with. And there are an enormous number of them here, uh, beginning with service on Jimmy Jonas's Foot, football team in grade school. But I tried to put together a list of all the people that I wanted to recognize, many of them here, some of them not here. And the list got so damn long that I really quit, quit trying to compile that list, in part because several people on my list came to me and said, keep it short tonight. <laughs> so so no, no less. As I think about my life at the law and the court, several things really seem to me to be significant. First, the court survived a terrible crisis uh, in the mid-1970s. Uh, I think one of the most significant things I ever worked on was the impeachment process uh, of justices, three justices, uh, during that time. And that's the time I got to know of really bright, courageous young lawyer named John Thrasher, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, and the work we did there, I think, made a great deal of difference in the way the court has progressed. Thank goodness Governor Askew was around. Thank goodness for merit retention. I think about how the court emerged uh, from that process, from the disgrace that the court was in for a period of time, to suddenly becoming, again, a very distinguished court in, in the United States. Look, this is the court that is the first court in the country to adopt uh, the interest on lawyers' trust accounts. Every, every court in the nation has done that now. This is the first court to adopt uh, the cameras in the courtroom. First court in the nation to do that. And it's a court that took the leadership in, in things like dispute resolution, uh, uh, drug courts, and many, many other things. And so as I think about what happened to the court over this period of time, I come away thinking, gosh, what a wonderful thing that that culture that existed for a brief time in the Florida Supreme Court was changed. It's changed so much for the better. And so that quick movement of the court uh, really convinced me that, uh, that institutions can change and, 
and be better. And so I feel very lucky to have served during this time. And it occurs to me that our speaker tonight reminds us that there's been an enormous change. Uh, when I was, went to law school, the events that are described in Devil in the, in the Grove were going on. Willis McCall was still a character in Florida that many, many people knew and understood what was going on uh, in the Goldland Boys case. Uh, and yet we've moved beyond that. Uh, think about uh, a, uh, what's happened to the bar. Uh, suddenly uh, we have African Americans, suddenly we have Hispanics, hell, Hispanic Chief Justice. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we have women. <laughs> Patsy Palmer. Uh, you know, it, uh, we've had these wonderful, wonderful changes. Uh, and yet, as I find delight in all the progress that we've made uh, from those evil days uh, of the Grove Run case, uh, and I think about uh, everything that has been accomplished, I have to pause and wonder what future generations are going to say about us. What is it that people are going to say about our criminal justice system? What are they going to say about the way we run our prisons? What are they going to say about the way we provide access to justice? Uh, these are things that we ought to begin to think about and pay attention to. And with all the great examples we've had in the past, I think uh, that there are real possibilities with judges and lawyers working together to bring about these changes. And of course, so many of the changes that are really important have been led uh, by the court itself. And I'd like to say just a, a few words. You heard a poem earlier. Um, Justice Perry's son gave a really nice poem. I don't have a poem for you tonight, <laughs> but, but I've got doggo. You know what doggo is? It's irregular meter and bad verse. <laughs> so here's my dogma. If I can find my glasses. <laughs> Justices before whom I've practiced. To the court, we lift our Merlot. Soon enough, if correct, but often quite slow. <laughs> Thomas Adams, and of course BK, to Drew and Thomas, to Drew and Thornall, we lift a Cabernet symbolically. O'Connell was the last that Collins appointed, Governor Bryant then Colwell anointed. Richard the Great, Wade the Lad, Vassar, Jimmy, and Joe, then McCain the Bad. How the Unfortunate, then four horsemen of Reformation, then Arthur Allen and Joe took up their stations. We toast Reuben for his marriage selection. He toasted with water, which we do with affection. <laughs> Carl, Alderman, and Parker Lee, Ray, Leander, and Rosemary. Bright Grimes and Cogan and the bowtied Harding, <laughs> Wells, Anstead, sadly departing. Like others achieving constitutional senility, returning, retiring despite their continued ability. Barbara Perrienti, Fred Lewis, and the twice appointed Quince, followed by happily continued excellence. Quintero, Bell, and Canada, Polston, LaBarca, Perry, no further can we say. But what I can say, and I say with pride, that for 52 years, it's been a really great ride. Thank you so much. Ten months ago when we lost Ruben Askew, a number of people said, what are we going to do? And the answer was, we still have Sandy. <laughs>